The human species is an incredibly social one. Throughout our entire evolution, we've been surrounded by other people, family and friends, the tribes we were a part of that grew into communities and civilizations. And throughout all of that evolution, our brain has had to devise and create mechanisms to keep track of these social structures and the relationships that are important to us. Now, social neuroscience is a new and exciting field because it's combining two disciplines. You have social psychology and cognitive neuroscience. Social psychology has formally been around since about the 1940s. So almost a hundred years of work that scientists have been doing to try to understand how our thoughts and our feelings and behaviors are influenced by the people around us. But cognitive neuroscience is a very new field because it was only recently in the past 20, 30 years that we've started to create the tools and the technology that allows us to peer inside your brain and really see what regions and mechanisms are involved with making sense of all of these social type thought processes. Now, social neuroscience officially kicked off in the early 1990s with the work of John Cassiopo. And he looked at how things like isolation can be incredibly damaging to mammalian species, like rats, and primates, and humans. And that work has led to uncovering this need to belong that we all have. A need that's so strong that many social scientists argue that it should be on the same level as the need for thirst and the need for hunger. Because of all of the negative health outcomes that can arise if that need is not met, like all of these ones. Now, all of this work that started with animal models, with rats, primates, eventually led to human research when we were finally able to now start putting human beings inside devices like MRI scanners. Devices that allow us to peer inside your brain and to see what different regions are involved with these different types of social thought processes. What types of brain activity are representing certain people or certain social structures. And all of this led to the emergence of two kind of main topics that are studied in social neuroscience. And that's the self and the other. Now, you may be wondering what the self has to do with social thought processes, but I would argue that the self has everything to do with social thought processes. We need to understand how the brain forms a sense of self, how it maintains a sense of identity that sets it apart from these other people around it. We want to know how this sense of self is used as a template for trying to understand other people, maybe similar, close to us and how we maybe veer away from that sense of self and resort to things like stereotypes when people are not close or similar to us. And when it comes to thinking about others, we wanna know how the brain kind of keeps track of all of these relationships that we're maintaining, the social structure that we're a part of, the norms and the rules that we have to obey in these different types of social situations. We wanna know how the brain achieves things like theory of mind, how we're able to really understand that the people around us have a perspective of their own and a mind of their own. We want to know how the brain tracks things like facial expression, emotion, and body language to give us cues on how we are supposed to behave, right? These are all topics that are being studied in the social neuroscience world. And the experiments are just getting more and more creative and innovative to be able to really crack into all of these different processes. To the point where some researchers now are showing that our brains actually sync up with one another. When we're close to people, when we become good friends or intimate with other people, that our brains actually start firing the same way. That we start representing things at a neural level in a similar way. Incredible stuff. So that gives you kind of a surface level view of what social neuroscience is and why it may be important for us to really dig into these mechanisms and to really understand how it is that the brain 
make sense of this incredibly complex social world that we're all a part of. So if you got any value from this video at all, uh, it would really help my channel if you hit like and subscribe. And if you want a deeper dive into some of these topics, if you really want to understand how a lot of this works and how others kind of influence our behavior, uh, check out the e-courses I have as well. I have a link in the description below. So I hope to see you for the next video. I'll see you then.